Hi, my name is Melissa Johnson. I'm a research biologist at USDA Agricultural Research Service. Today I'll be talking about monitoring CLR on Hawaii Island, first year insights from commercial coffee farms. This work is in collaboration with Luis Aristizabal. He's an independent consultant and also works closely with Shaq. The aim of our CLR monitoring program was to assist growers in the early detection of rust, track the spread of rust across the island, and also describe patterns of disease incidence and severity. We initiated monitoring in January 2021 with surveys ongoing. We conducted monthly assessments at 30 farms in Kona, 10 farms in Kau, and one farm in Hilo. For each survey, we looked at 15 to 25 trees, depending on the size of the farm, and we inspected one low-level and one mid-level branch per tree. We recorded the number of leaves with CLR present on each branch, and also calculated the leaf area with CR CLR lesions, which is termed severity. We also installed a weather station at each farm to, conduct, to collect information on weather variables, including temperature, humidity, rainfall, leaf wetness, as well as a number of other variables that are important for spore germination and dispersal. And then lastly, we also collected management records from each grower. This map shows the current state of CLR on Hawaii Island. In the yellow, we have farms that have CLR present. The green pins show farms that do not yet have CLR. When we initiated surveys in January 2021, 64% of the farms in Kona were already positive. This number quickly jumped up to 80% in March, 87% in June, and by November, all of the farms that we were looking at in Kona were positive for CLR. In Kau, we made our first positive detection in September, and that number has quickly jumped up to 36% as of December 2021. As of yet, we have not detected CLR in Hilo. We did not find any significant difference between low, mid, or high elevation farms early in the season. However, mid and high elevation farms did have higher incidence than low elevation farms towards the end of the season, but this was not statistically significant due to a low number of low elevation farms sampled. Um, as you can see here, we only sampled six farms from low elevations compared to 14 farms from mid and 10 farms from high elevations. So we'll need to sample additional low elevation farms to see if this trend holds. In terms of seasonal patterns of CLR incidence and severity, we found that mean incidence remained below 5% until increasing in July and August, and then peaking at 36% from September to December, as shown in the orange line in the graph below. Max severity followed a very similar trend, shown in the blue line. It stayed below 10% for the first half of the season, and then shot up to around 15% for the second half of the season. We observed significant defoliation at the end of the harvest in November and December, with on average trees losing 25% of their leaves, shown in the green bars. You can see that throughout the season, trees, uh, branches typically had around 20 leaves compared to November and December when defoliation really started to hit. And we saw branches going down to about 15 leaves per branch. We also found a strong positive correlation between defoliation and CLR incidence. We also wanted to know where CLR is found within farms. Typically what we saw was that shady areas, unpruned large trees, areas along roadways where workers and vehicles frequented, and also borders, especially those that were next to other coffee farms, seemed to have the highest CLR incidence and severity. Within trees, lower branches tended to have slightly higher incidence than branches in the mid canopy, but you can see from the graph here that this difference was not significant. As disease progresses, it tends to move up the tree with the lower branches defoliating first, as shown in the picture above. I also think it's important to point out that in years past, trees on these farms were very healthy. 
These photographs were taken from one particular farm in Holoa over three consecutive years, right in the middle of harvest, and you can see that the trees are vibrant and healthy. This is compared to 2021 when we first started to see CLR move in. In February on the same farm, the trees still looked pretty good. We didn't see too many lesions. By May, we started to see some of the yellow spots showing up and some of the leaves starting to fall from the lower branches. And then by August, infection really shot up. We started to see a lot of lesions on the leaves and a lot of tissue necrosis. By September, October, and November, we're seeing advanced defoliation on these farms with many trees left with nothing but berries. We also wanted to know what growers were doing in terms of management. All of the farms that we surveyed conducted end of season pruning. Most applied fertilizer at least one or two times. All of the farms were controlling weeds either manually or with herbicide. One farm pruned some of their large fruit trees, which helped to lower their infection by in increasing ventilation and decreasing humidity. The majority of farms also used either a copper-based or hydrogen dioxide-based preventative. Some of them only applied this once. Some farms applied this up to five times. A few farms sprayed one application of the systemic before harvest. However, most of the farms that we surveyed still saw an increase in CLR incidence and severity, some of the farms up to 75 or 80% by the end of the year. There are probably several different things going on at these farms. The first problem is that for a lot of the farms, the rust simply wasn't detected early enough, so a lot of these preventatives and curatives just weren't effective at a higher level of infection. The second problem that we saw was that a lot of the farms, even though they did make one or two spray applications, they weren't doing it frequently enough and they were not rotating among products. In summary, CLR has spread rapidly throughout Kona and now it's moving across the growing areas of Kau. Unfortunately, we're seeing that the weather conditions on Hawaii Island are optimal for CLR germination almost year round and that low, mid, and high elevation farms are all susceptible. Monitoring your field is, a, is critical for early detection of this disease. You should aim to inspect 25 trees with one branch from the low and one branch from the mid canopy for each tree. Be careful to inspect all areas of your farm frequently, as in monthly, as infection at low levels can be very difficult to detect. We have also seen that good management practices are essential to combating CLR. We have many tools available to us in our toolbox and it will be important to use a combination of these for the most effective management strategy. With that, I'd like to thank all of you for your attention. Thanks to all of the growers that worked with us um, over the last year in this program. I'd like to thank my great team of technicians for all of their assistance in the lab and field. Thanks to all of the field workers, producers, extension agents, researchers, industry representatives, and grower associations. Together, we can control this disease. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks again.